Trying to grab all the groceries in one trip? Oof, not how you would have done that. You know sometimes less is more. Like when you drive less and save with the USAA annual mileage discount. USAA. Get a quote today. When I was picturing shoving this dude's slong into my two by four, I made sure to use the correct Unhoused. Like, unhoused. I wrote, dang, unhoused Russian dude is hot. Okay. okay. <laughs> He's hot. You got go back. Go back. You'll see. Interesting. Like to support him with my social safety net, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'd give him more than a dollar if you know okay. what I, mean. I literally so, wrote that. They, oh my god. <laughs> Okay, I didn't write that. I just noticed that. Yes. You belong on our show, Kara. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the Eli Bosnick, as always. Eli, how's it going, buddy? Oh, hey, Heath. It's good to see you today now while you are here. <laughs> nice. I'm ready to do a podcast. That's the whole movie. That's better, though. I understood those were words that made a sentence in English. Yeah, no, that's we're fair. We're going to get to fair. it. And we also have veteran masochist Kara Santa Maria. Kara, welcome back to this movie. Mm, um. <laughs> <laughs> no. I reject being <laughs> What I will say is I finally get, like, this movie encapsulates why Eli enjoys, and maybe you do too, Heath, but actually enjoys watching these god-awful movies. Yeah, Like, this was the first time that I was like, I think I get this it. This is a great example. Mm -hmm. this, this was truly... Yeah. Stockholm Syndrome kicking in. <laughs> enjoyable to watch. Just, it's oh, insanity. Every second yeah. was yeah. wonderful. By the way, I just have to point this out. I don't usually do this, but on our Patreon, Kara, someone cut together all the greetings you have ever done oh, no. for being on our show <laughs> and titled it The Destruction of Kara Santa Maria. Yes. <laughs> and it is the best short story. I don't know. If you can send it to us, uh, we'll put it on the main feed so more people can okay. see it. And uh, this last one, the capper of just like, no, I do not I'm welcome just like, back. I am not here. Maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, let's get right into it. Kara, what amazing fucking movie are we going to be breaking down today? Well, we watched a film called <laughs> Born Into Mafia. It's the story <laughs> of... I have no idea what we just watched. Yeah, I, honestly, I was going to no say. Idea. It yeah, has a story, I think. <laughs> it's not clear. It's the story of a man who was born into the mafia. Yep. I think. Right. Fair. Well, maybe not the mafia. They don't use an article in the title, so it's not clear. That's it could right. be a mafia. We don't know. It's the one Russian mafia, mafia we're going to learn. Yeah. One of them. It, one yeah. of them. Yeah. Indefinite. Okay. And Eli, <laughs> how bad was born into mafia? Well, if you love The Last Vampire, but the white hot acting talent of its stars left you unsure of what people were thinking and feeling... <laughs> You will love <laughs> this movie. Okay. This was before or after... Right before. The Last Vampire on Earth. Right before. Yeah. This is before. Okay, so Last Vampire on Earth was like once the skills had been refined in our movie maker. <laughs> Obviously, he really found his oeuvre. Wait, so I haven't seen Last Vampire. Is this... Because this has a very distinct The Room flavor for me. Mm -hmm. And like even your impression at the top could have been, what's his name? Tommy, Tommy Wiseau. Yeah, Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau, yeah you yeah. sounded exactly like Tommy Wiseau. Not like, <laughs> I don't know what, who these, yeah. Okay. This movie is, yeah, it's got, it's like Tommy Wiseau meets Neil Breen, which is like, I don't know, like mm. some kind of cosmic event for God awful movies in some sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It shows just how far the hole has down to go when you explore the bad movie genre, right? When I tell casual people like, oh, I, I review bad movies, they're like, The Room. And I'm like, you have no idea what I am capable no. of. <laughs> the Room is a gentle wind across your parched throat compared with some of the movies we have watched. They don't know. They don't know. Yeah. All right. Is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'd say best worst Russian... Just that best worst Russian. Yep, sure, yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just, I don't need to add anything. Yeah. Fair. I was going to go with best worst 
profile pic for the writer slash producer slash director slash star of the movie, Vitali Versace. I think that's a fake last name, but he... <laughs> no, you, don't, you don't think his given name is that of a lazily named porn star? You I think don't think he, it is. Uh, I don't think it is. One? It's something else. But uh. his profile pic for all his social media is him holding an Emmy Award wearing a tuxedo, very clearly excited about the Emmy Award that he won. He has never won an Emmy. He's nope. Just, he got one from somewhere and he put on a tuxedo. And he I'm assuming he snatched it out of Kara's purse while she was looking in the other direction. Yeah. And he stood in front of a sign for the National Academy of Television, Arts and Sciences, the Lower Great Lakes chapter. And mm. I guess he was at the award ceremony for that somehow. So, Heath, I, I did a little sleuthing and it's actually significantly sadder than what you're picturing. Really? Oh, no. Because if you visit the Great Lakes Center for the National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, mm -hmm. they have a step and repeat where you can take a picture Amazing. with an Emmy and he <laughs> dressed in a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> and he got and a fake Emmy a picture of himself. Aww. <laughs> in preparation for his eventual Emmy win. Phenomenal. But I don't even, he's a filmmaker. Yep. He yeah, why is he doing not an, an award Emmy? Winning Kara, one. He doesn't know, Kara. But the Emmys are for, the, for television. <laughs> this movie has a guest star in the opening credits. He that's doesn't true. know. That's true. That's true. Okay. It's on Ant it. Flix. That's technically television, Ant right? Flix? Yeah. yeah. What is that? Do we Streaming get to go there yet? It's a guy named Anton who was like, Anton, Netflix. Ant Flix yep. nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. 100%. Port Portmanteau. <laughs> and of course, I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst. Thought bubbles. Cheating. Yeah. Cheating. Yep. They're Stole too good. That. We'll talk about it when They're we get to it. <laughs> we'll talk about it when we get to okay. it. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back to tell you all about Born Into Mafia. Okay, everybody. First of all, welcome to my big, sexy American movie writing party. Go ahead and take off all your shirts, right? Let's real world roll rolls no, challenge it no, up not, in here, not right? Take off my shirt. Absolutely not gonna happen. Okay, but when the babs get here, you guys are not gonna be ready for the sauna. I have so many questions. I am a woman. Oh, you know what I mean, Doreen. I'm talking about babes, you know, the kind who wear candle store perfume, you know, real ladies. At candle store perfumes? Okay, to business. The good news is I already wrote a super awesome script. So cha-ching, Rams of Ving. Right. So did you want us to take a look? Yeah, maybe correct some of the grammar and... Yeah, good idea. No need, Grandma Speed. My English is amazing. I study only mm. the best Elon Musk tweets and Etsy store listings to learn it. I have the best English in my village. Okay, sorry. Where are you from? Chega Noche, baby. Largest incline producer in the world, my friend. I feel insane right no now. Idea what that is, the words. That okay, so happen. script is done. We should move in next week as soon as my sexy, beautiful lady friend finishes the music parts. And in the meantime, we lunch it real good. You guys want some bola govras? Are, are those dumplings filled with hummus? Yeah, but it's a meat dessert. So no. Yeah, no. Ooh. Other question. When you eat caviar, are you supposed to like swallow it or do you just like spit it out after you taste it like you do with boba? Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Heath, I was just asking Kara about famous people stuff. She is such a good listener. Really? Kara, he doesn't get annoying? Uh, sorry, what? I said, doesn't Eli get annoying? Oh, no, I've been blocking him out with my wireless earbuds from Raycon. Oh, what are wireless earbuds? From Raycon. Well, Raycons are the best way to listen to whatever you've got in your headphones this summer. Raycons have a 32-hour battery life, including eight hours of playtime, so you can listen to what you want, when you want, for a really long time. Plus, they come with custom gel tips for the most comfortable in-ear fit. Wow, that sounds amazing. But that sounds super expensive, too. Yeah, you guys know what else is expensive? Lululemon, right? Okay. Thank you, um, Eli. Actually, Raycon wireless earbuds start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. And Raycons come with a 30-day happiness guarantee, so you can't really lose. It's true. Raycon sent us a pair to try when they became a sponsor, and they were so good that my wife stole them. 
And then she lost them. So we bought a pair. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon right now. God Awful Movies listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash gam. That's buyraycon.com slash gam to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash gam. All right. Thanks, Kara. But seriously, do you spit out caviar when, when you're done tasting it, like with boba? You're not supposed to spit out either of those things. Mm, that can't be right. What? She's trying to trick us. Yep. Yeah, okay. And we're back. We're going to start with the, I think, intro to a reality show about like low level criminals in a house together on the beach and a fun <laughs> theme song. So, Balkan Shore, maybe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then they finally do the actual movie after a while with that intro, starting at the Olive Garden, which was lovely, in Moscow with a live singer at the Olive Garden. It was very confusing. Well, it's not supposed to be an Olive Garden. Let's be very no, no. clear. We see the sign. <laughs> no, that's the thing. I must have blinked at the beginning because you guys talk about it being Olive Garden. And I'm like, yeah, it's probably Olive Garden, but whatever, that's funny. But then later, when they go back, they do a, an establishing shot of the sign of the Olive Garden. Of Absolutely. the full sign centered. In this one, mm -hmm. they just have like a little bit of it. And I was like, that's the Olive Garden. That's definitely the Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah, it's because this is supposed to be in Russia. So they're like, oh man, we are in LA, California, the land of movie lights. But we need a restaurant. Wait a second. My uncle owns an Olive Garden. Yeah. We can just show the bottom half of the sign and they'll think it's a Moscovian restaurant. That's, that's name is Garden in English. 100% exactly what happened. This is in Jacksonville, Florida. And this, this guy, Vitaly Versace, clearly like, Went up to an Olive Garden, like, regional manager during, like, a shit and was like, I, I want by tomorrow day. And he was like, fuck, I don't, okay. He had to, like, call his boss and figure it out. Somehow they got it, though. But then they did, like, weird set dressing in the Olive Garden because every Olive Garden I've been to didn't have, like, wedding chairs. Yeah. Did you notice that everybody was yeah. sitting on wedding chairs? Vitaly very clearly got in there and he was like, oh man, this Olive Garden looks like Olive Garden. Hey man, do you have like <laughs> yeah. 74 tablecloths I can drape over every possible service so that people will think it is a funeral for ghosts by a ghost? And the manager was <laughs> no. like, sure man, okay, yeah. Heath, he's going to do this voice the whole fucking Everything. episode. That's yeah. it. <laughs> because I'm giving people a behind the scenes view of what happened, Kara. They need to know. This is our lives. But to be fair, just so everybody knows, he does not sound like that at this all. This is what he sounds like. It's pretty accurate. <laughs> it's the last voice I'm allowed to do, Kara. <laughs> Political correctness has taken all my other voices away. It's <laughs> amazing. You used to have Ben Carson. <laughs> no, okay. we're not. We're not. <laughs> a better time. <laughs> okay, so back to the movie. There's a singer okay. lady. So and there's she's a singing. singer lady. Played by Vitaly Versace's real-life girlfriend, who also wrote all the music for this movie no. and co-wrote the screenplay. Yeah, That tracks. No. Okay. And th there's writing, maybe. Okay, they co-wrote it together. Fine. Mm -hmm. So two bad guys from the mob, a from a mafia, show up, and they're looking for somebody under the tables, apparently. <laughs> Well, yeah, they're checking the room to make sure there are no assassins present. And everyone knows that the first place you look for assassins is crouching under the table. Under the table. Got it. Okay. So they were doing like secret service. Yeah, okay. that's yeah. fair. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> check. And this is our first thought bubble of the movie. We we'll referenced this at the very beginning. So a guy thinks the words bring him in in Russian. And we see that because he's got a cartoon thought bubble next to his head. <laughs> And apparently, the other actor can see that thought bubble because he then brings in the big boss guy. Okay. Yeah, I was confused at this point as to what language the film was supposed to be in. So was the movie. It did say we were in Moscow, <laughs> right? Like, it said that. Yeah. But then, like, sometimes the thought bubbles were, what, what is it, like, Cyrillic? And sometimes mm -hmm. they were in English. Yep. And then all of the <laughs> subtitles, like, never matched. But that's pretty common, I guess. Never matched the script. Yeah, no, whoever took over doing the <laughs> subtitling at YouTube was like, I'm going to fix this goddamn thing one word at a time. <laughs> yeah, the closed captioning and the thought bubbles get into fights with each other. In, they do. In the movie, which, pretty is, which is actually basis. pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> at this moment, it was the first one. So I was like, OK, the henchmen have telepathy. Maybe this is interesting. No, it's not. They're just insane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're going to use thought bubbles every so often. 
so we meet this guy. He's the big boss, I guess, of the Russian mob just in general. There's one and this is mm -hmm. the guy. And he happens to be American for some reason. Yes. So this is very important <laughs> that we discuss this dynamic. The guy who plays the Russian mob boss is American and speaks American English. His son, who will show up momentarily, <laughs> is Russian and speaks English as well as I speak Russian. <laughs> Which and like, didn't stop him from writing the movie. <laughs> it's so confusing. Like why? So yeah, the dad is like a cross between pre-hair plug Michael Scott Ooh. and... <laughs> Michael Cohen. Like, he very yeah. much is an amalgamation of those two people. <laughs> yeah. Like, if Michael Scott ate creatine instead of fettuccine Alfredo to bulk yes. up for the big yeah. race. Yeah. Yes. And he sounds like Carl the Pug of Pegacorn, and then he's his son is just broken English Russian. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, he's yeah. like, he's like New Jersey Russian or something. Yeah. He's like, yo, exactly. <laughs> I'm a mob boss. Right. Dog. So, so the son shows up, dad's sitting down, he's kind of flirting with the singer who we find out is his girlfriend in the movie, too. Son shows up, and uh, I know it's the son because the line here is, Hi, son, you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> Confirmed by the son saying, I said I will be here. Yep. Exactly. And this is the, first, this is the opening lines in the opening script. Opening <laughs> spoken lines of this movie. I wrote in my notes, dialogue as written by chat GPT running on a Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this whole movie was like an AI wrote the whole movie. Like, yeah. have you ever seen those, like that pizza commercial that exactly. an AI wrote? Exactly, yes. That's 100%. this whole movie. Mm -hmm. This is what Michael <laughs> Eisner has running in his office right now being like, how much worse can this be than the last <laughs> Daredevil movie? Come on! <laughs> That's so, bad. so what we're learning here is that dad wants the son to take over the family business. Dad is Alex, son is Ivan. And he wants the kid to take over, but the kid doesn't really want to be in the mafia. And so dad is sending Ivan to the best psychologist in Moscow to get him okay with the idea of being the head of a murder empire, I guess. Yes. And when he proposes that, this is the exact dialogue. I won't do it. Yes, you yes, are. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's the exact yes, he says, words exchanged. I don't have any problems. Why would I need a shrink? Mm -hmm. I love that the dad literally says, I'm going to send you to the best psychologist. Exactly like you said it, Heath, in Moscow. I'm pretty sure they don't pronounce it Moscow in, in Moscow. Moscow. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. Yikes. <laughs> Either way, I was looking forward to watching talk therapy in like the ninth language of everyone involved. And we actually do get a little bit of that for a second. We do. <gasps> oh my God, fun. this therapy session. Yeah. So, I have a lot to say. Speaking of which, from there, we cut to a house in a suburb of Moscow called Jacksonville, Florida. Again, <laughs> this is where the best psychologist in Moscow has her practice at this <laughs> fancy house. It's... Oh my God, you Googled it. I Yes, I did. I, th so they show us a street sign and I just like Googled that. And then on Zillow, it showed me this exact house and it sold for a uh, half a million dollars two months ago, actually. Yikes. In Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like an Amityville house thing? Like, well, okay, look, if you were scared by haunted houses, wait till you see what kind of movie was shot in this film. Okay. No, that's just Florida. Eli, yeah. that's just Florida. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is Jacksonville, Florida. Florida. To remember. We, <laughs> we go inside and we see their talk therapy session. <gasps> the doctor has... A framed poster for the movie Training Day on her it's wall. It's the greatest thing in the universe. <laughs> That's a normal thing, right? Kara, what do you have on your wall in terms of framed movie posters when you're doing? Um, I, I assume it's a Joker. Is it the Joker? Yeah, you got the Joker. Word. Everything about this therapy session is 100% accurate. I mean. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. She literally like tells him within one minute of sitting down that he needs to trust her and he should open up. Yeah. She also says that uh, you believe in God and that's stupid. A Christian movie. Check. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how is this a God awful movie? Then I was like, oh, yeah, he says I believe in God twice. So it made it a Christian movie. Exactly. Also, he's like, I don't want to kill people. I don't want to join the family business. And so she gets up from her seat and really close sits next to him. Is that not normal? Very close. Sits. Kara, do you do that? Do you ever wander over to their side of the couch for a little side hug action when someone, it is someone needs a breakthrough? So awkward. And this was not a breakthrough. This was in <laughs> the first 30 seconds of their session. And, and then 
I believe she took us a, a victory sip from her giant fucking mug, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. the size of mug. a cauldron. It was crazy. It's so good. It, she lifts it. She takes a sip and it blocks out her whole head like an eclipse. <laughs> yep. And then he explains that That's he's going to move to the United States. <laughs> Oh, right. There's plot right. there. All the plot happens in like the in five minutes of this movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So that's the plot. He's running away to the U.S. to get out of the mafia. And we cut to the <laughs> Jacksonville Public Library of Moscow because he hasn't gone yet. He's supposed to still be <laughs> in Russia. But he's in an all English library for people who like might want to leave Russia and learn English stuff, I guess. <laughs> You know where the Russian gangsters hang out in the children's book section of their nearest public of library. The potential expat English public library. Right. That they every have. sign. They, they felt the need. They were like, let's get a wide shot. Make sure you get every English sign you possibly can so we can make sure the audience knows this is Moscow. Look, I know we have a lot of librarians in our audience. I know that because I've spoken against them once or twice and have felt their wrath. <laughs> But the librarian that this guy walked up to and he was like, hey, I love it here because I learn all my favorite books. Um, Do you think I can shoot my super cool movie here? And she was like, how long do you need it for? And he was like, four and a half seconds. And she was like, sold. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) You can shoot this world shatteringly bad movie in this public library. Oh, this is where he meets his friend, Sergey. Friends forever, man. Friends forever, yeah. man. <laughs> Friends forever, man. BFF Sergey is his full name, I think, as he was introduced here. And Sergey helps him find a book about the USA or whatever. And we also get an idea bubble from the Nat Geo magazine behind them on the rack. The Nat Geo says to itself, USA. Yep. I think <laughs> maybe it was starting up the chant of like USA, USA. And nobody went with him. Something unclear. No one could read the magazine's mind. Unclear why the magazine thinks the word USA. Okay. He also tells him here that he met a super cool kid online and that he's going to go live with him if his mom says it's okay. Yeah. Jacob. Jacob from online said he could have a sleepover. Yeah, exactly. Terrifying. In America. We're going to meet Jacob and it's just, it's a grown up, but like, don't say kid then. Everyone's a grown up. Everyone in this movie is 37 (laughs) years old. (laughs) It's still insane to meet a grown-up online and have his mom say it's okay to stay with him when you show up in Los Angeles for no reason. Everything's insane. So, leaves the library, and then he apparently gets in the back of the limo with Dad and has a little mafia HR meeting. Dad's kind of mad at him for um, not killing the target that Ivan was supposed to kill, that he got assigned to kill, I guess. This is where it becomes quite apparent that there is no script. No. They are just talking. Mm Mm-hmm. And the best they can. he's always trying to think of what to say next. And I think he's doing that, that thing that sometimes you have to do when you're when English is your second language, where he says it in his head in Russian and then translates it to English and then says it out loud in English. Because every line he says in the back of this car, there's like weird pauses and delays that make yeah. no sense. The script is as if a Swedish Ikea manual happening for right, yes. exactly <laughs> for sure. And the dad who speaks English is constantly correcting his lines through <laughs> his own lines, right? So he'd be like, because of your business, mom is dead died. And he'll be like, yes, <laughs> your mom is dead, <laughs> eyes wide. Yeah. But what you have to understand, no, dad, don't tell me. You know I founded Jesus two years ago and now I'm going to church every day. <laughs> can, can I read my favorite quote? I'll try please, and do it in your do. like ridiculous no-ho Hank accent. Okay, here we go. I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for you. I didn't ask for mom. I didn't ask for this. So I'm your son and it's just crazy. <laughs> it just happened this. You know, my mom died because of this shit and the rest of the stuff. You know, I can't deal with this. You know? Yep. <laughs> That's the level. Like, that is a verbatim scene from this movie. My note at that point is, I could place a minotaur within that labyrinth of a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and the, I, the closed captioning is trying so hard, and they're just like, ah, fuck it, by the end. I think that's what it said on my closed captioning, by the yeah. end. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. If I can quote my favorite line from this scene, it's, and Bible and God said, don't kill. I'm not going to kill anybody. <laughs> For money. <laughs> For money. <laughs> Buddy. Oh, and then there's this weird exposition at the about the brother. Like, your brother is horrible. 
Oh, it's the dad, the dad's brother. Your yes, uncle is horrible. Brother. He's terrible. Yes, I do not trust him. He is shady. And you're like, why are they having this conversation? <laughs> yeah, when he says that, the son replies, hopefully nobody's going to find me where I'm happy. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then he, he decides to fully quit the mafia and literally is like, no, I mean, like right now, I need to get out of the car. You, sh- you need to stop the car and just let me out. And I'm going to walk to the airport oh, yeah, he says, of Moscow. <laughs> I'm going to walk from here. And I wrote in my notes to America. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, yes. And this is when dad calls Tom L.A. in his phone. He knows somebody named Tom who lives in Los Angeles, I guess. And he's telling a henchman to like look after my kid, Ivan, when he shows up in L.A. tomorrow. Exactly. So then we cut to a fitness center. Also American. Yeah. It's <laughs> this is the fitness center at the Avenue Royale Apartments in Jacksonville. I know that. Mm-hmm. Because I it it again, up. Yeah. And the actor playing Sergey, he has been uh, murdered. Oh, my God. This was jarring. Okay, but here's the thing. This might be jarring if the actor who played Sergey hadn't only agreed to be in this movie if... When he got hanged, he got to stick his tongue out like a cartoon. He does. Because he will spend this entire scene (laughs) dead with his tongue being like, "Mm." okay. (laughs) I will say, though, according to my sources, that is what happens if you get hanged. Right, but we don't show it in the movie for very obvious reasons. <laughs> I think your tongue hangs out of your mouth. I don't think that you stick your tongue out of your mouth like like a baby. Like it's like a weird baby doll face that the guy's making. It's absolutely <laughs> insane. And even if it was scientifically like accurate, it definitely shouldn't be in the movie. And also, by the way, he's like, Sergey, no, no, takes him down, like shakes him a little bit, cut to off to America. Yep, he's gone. There you <laughs> like go. There's nothing. It's no enough morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. So friend dead, and he's like, all right, well, got to catch my flight. So he leaves. Oh, wait, there's a reason the friend died, right? We should probably say that. He had like a post it note on his chest. Yes. Yeah. It was just like a, you're not going to America. So I murdered your friend. Home is Russia for you. Don't leave. And he's like, well, I'm leaving. (laughs) This guy's already dead. And he still leaves. Yeah. 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 Then we see the airplane in the air and the airplane has a thought, but in Russian. So not clear exactly what the airplane was thinking. (laughs) Yeah. In my head, it was just like, I'm fucking flying. This is so cool. So we see that for a second in a thought bubble. Hope so. And then we cut back to Mafia Dad and he is at the Olive Garden again. This time full signage. Yeah, and this is this is where that sketchy brother we talked about before shows up to take over his mob. And brother is also American. So now we've got angry American mobsters in Jacksonville, Florida, Moscow, fighting over their son Ivan is what's happening. <laughs> Reading a scene <laughs> written by a Russian with the broken English, right? So they're just yelling at each other in American accents like, who are you to say you are here? Hey, not now, big guy. You think you're so tough. <laughs> You are a tough guy, huh? <laughs> okay. That's so good. So Dimitri is the brother who comes in, right? And he, yeah, speaks in what sounds like an American accent, but I think he's just like a, a really dumb person who's bad at talking. So it's like broken mm-hmm. English, but his native language at the same time. I, I think he, I think you just agreed to read the script verbatim after the liberties dad took in the first couple of scenes. <laughs> Vladimir Versace took him aside and he was like, hey, man, I don't want to talk bad about Doug behind his back, but he is ruining my movie film script. I need you to read the lines as written on the page, you know, Christopher Walken, baby. <laughs> And he's like, okay, I'll read okay. exactly what you wrote on well, the page. He reads it, and then he kills his brother. He kills Alex, the Mafia Don, so he could take over the Mafia. Well, it's amazing, because it's like a King of the Hill system, apparently. Because the second he kills the brother, he turns to the guards, who are obviously about to shoot him, and he's like, hey, 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 I'm in charge. I have dibs. Yeah. I have dibs. It's it's a tag system. And they're like, oh, dibs. That was fast. That was oh, fast. Oh, okay. shit. He called dibs. Okay. He's head of the mob now. I think it is dibs. I think it is dibs. And these like shooting scenes, these death scenes that are epic. The choreography, <laughs> the believability, oh, the way yeah. that they actually- The like, blood work. Yeah, yeah. The ketchup work. It's like, it's lovely. Yes. Practical special effects. You know, you mm-hmm. miss- Not since the days of John Carpenter have people been gently drenched in ketchup with such beauty and grace. (laughs) 
And like almost every other scene where somebody dies, they die instantly. But in this one, Alex, the dad, just like blinks a lot in his chair. Yeah, he does do a lot of blinking. Yeah. a lot of blinking until And breathing, dead. to be fair. And bre- yeah, yeah, he has a REM type of death. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. And uh, now we're going to meet Jacob, the kid that <laughs> Ivan met on the internet. He's a grown up. He is a grown up. He's hanging with his other friend who is a grown up. So Jacob's mom said it's cool for Ivan to live at their house. And they're going to now go to the airport to pick up this random Russian guy who was met on the Internet. And Jacob's friend is like, that's fucking really weird. We're like, we're going to be in a sitcom or something, but fine, I'll go with you. And that's the scene. And when he says that, Jacob gets a thought bubble that says integration, brother. Yeah. What? Oh, OK. I have a theory on this. Please. I think it was the random person in the background because a Florida man just walks by in the background and sees Jacob, who is a black person, and other guy who is a white person and was like, integration, brother, Florida. Oh, huh. hmm. nice. Interesting. Maybe. <laughs> no? Yeah, I just wrote what the fuck. Hard to say. And what is happening in all caps. Okay. Well, they're not allowed to talk about this sort of thing in Florida anymore. I also wrote what... Guys, I'm willing to stop this podcast for as long as we need to figure out what that thought bubble was doing in the movie. So yeah, I, I'm with you, Kara. I'm with you. Right. And at this point, we've had a few thought bubbles, but it, it doesn't feel like we haven't gone full thought bubble yet. So I'm yeah. still like getting used to the thought bubbles at this point. Exactly. They, they keep surprising. You're like, okay, maybe that was just a weird thing from the beginning and they keep popping right back in again. Right, right. Okay. So you think the movie is pro-racial <laughs> integration and they wanted to tell us that there? I, here's what I think. I don't think it's the Florida man in the background. I think Jacob is supposed to be thinking it. And I think what Versace Vilexi or whatever the fuck his name is, is trying to get us to think, is trying to show us that Jacob is like, it's all about integration, man. But that Google translated seven times into his own language ended up as integration brother. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, Versace doesn't strike me like the the actor, writer, director, producer of this film (laughs) doesn't strike me as having star star, any particular agenda thoughts or. Oh, agenda. Okay, Yeah. Yeah. Any particular cohesiveness to his ideas. But I don't think he's like racist, right? He's pretty woke. Yeah, he seems kind of woke. I think it's a positive thing for him. He's like, the, and you know what, guys? There will be a black guy and the me and him will be friends in the name of segregation. And they were like, it's uh, not that. And he was like, don't worry, I'll look up the word ahead of time. Don't okay. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. He is going to very much enjoy Russian DNA, like from a eugenics perspective in a comment later. I just want to plant the seed for that. No, that's not here. Again, you're getting ahead of us, Heath. But that will happen pretty soon. It's not Russian. It's a different person thinks about Russian DNA. Okay. Well, well, when when we circle back to this, we'll decide again if Him. the integration brother yes. was a positive message. From the okay. Movie. Okay. All right. Follow the fucking thought bubbles, Heath. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Ivan lands at LAX. Jacob and friend guy. Can we give friend guy just a random name? Anyone want to name him? Let's call him Heath. It's, we're not going to call him. Off. Okay, let's just call him Alan. Can we call him Alan? The other How about guy? Ryan. Can we call him Ryan? No, <laughs> no, we're going to call him Alan. So Jacob and Alan are there to pick up Ivan when he's going to land. He, he finally gets through the gates and the customs and whatever. And they see him and he has no luggage. And then Alan says, a Russian with no luggage? As if... To say that's like an existing stereotype. Is that that a stereotype? Are Russians known for extra luggage when they travel? Well, I said, I said, what the fuck? He doesn't have any luggage. Like that was weird to me too, but not because he's Russian. Not because because he's Russian. Yeah. yeah, He's on an international flight moving to another country with zero luggage. But if, if this is a stereotype that I can pick up, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm running out of my biases. So if I can throw in some occasional <laughs> Russians love luggage jokes, I'm, I'm, I'm there, ready no. to do it. Yeah. Okay. So th- they meet each other. And then right after that, Tom, Tom L.A., dad's henchman friend, shows up to help Ivan with a car and some money. He gives him his truck and a bunch of money. And he is Red. I wrote in my notes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tom. Yes, I did fall asleep on a tanning bed. No, I do not want to talk yeah. about it. 
Cool, but was it just the front of your face that fell just in? Just the front, yep. And it was there for, okay. I promise you this is exactly what happened. This used car salesman was like, yeah, so I'm going to be in uh, Steve's kid's movie. Yeah, the Russian guy. You know, I'm going to be in his movie. It's like about mobsters or something. And she was like, well, you should get a tan. You'll look great. And he was like, I've never tanned before. How long do I get in? And she was like 30. And he was like, hours, got it. And that's why he looks like he's a stunt double for that VeggieTales tomato. Also, he he had hair in the tanning bed, and then he has since shaved his entire burned hair. It off, yeah, so no. it's all like the hair area like, is all wait, white, yeah, it's weird, bright red. Which he, I think, we can agree is a great look. It can be. <laughs> it's a great look. It can be. Why? Also, at this point, does he when he's like, "Hey, I have a car for you with a trunk full of money." Why does he have a thought bubble that says respect? Because <laughs> he respects him. <laughs> okay. Respect. Respect the the Russian guy who uh, is not rocking a lot of luggage to yeah. dispel the stereotype. One of the beautiful things about this movie is the use of the thought bubbles shows us as a movie audience. There were times when Vitaly Versace, auteur, was like, there's no way people will know how they feel about each other in this movie. <laughs> I should just write respect on top of his head face <laughs> and then everyone will like, no. Well, okay. it worked. The thing that happens next is the most infuriating part. And this movie has a lot of infuriating things in it, but this one drives me batshit. Okay, so they're at LAX. Jacob and what did we decide his name is? Alan. Heath. Jacob and... <laughs> it's Alan. <laughs> You're making a choice right now, Kara. Just so you know, the name that you say will say a lot about your favorite co-host. That's all I'm going to say right now. <laughs> you, well, now you it's not going to be Alan or Heath, name. clearly. Yeah, exactly. So Jacob and uncredited actor number three are Coward. hanging out. They're, they drive to LAX to pick up <laughs> Ivan. Tom shows up and is like, hi, Ivan. Dad said I'm supposed to take care of you. Here's a car with a trunk full of money. Ivan's like, I got wheels, so I'm going to take my car. So then uncredited actor and Jacob we're like, okay, we'll go with you. And they're like, uncredited actor, don't you want to drive your car home? And he's like, no, nah, I'll just leave it. And I'm losing my shit because do you know how expensive it is to leave your car at the airport? <laughs> yeah. Like, do you, you just understand? abandon your vehicle? Nobody would do that in the right mind. Nobody mm -hmm. would be like, I'll just leave my car behind at LAX. Do you know how long it takes just to get into LAX? Yes. And But there's no doubt in my heart of hearts that Vitaly has done this multiple times. <laughs> He's borrowed a car from a friend and been like, anyways, I'm off to home. Hey, Jerry, just so you know, I abandoned your car somewhere in LAX. Good luck finding it, friend. <laughs> okay, but it's like a 92 Plymouth Valiant or whatever it was. I think he's right. just like, ah, oh, it's cheaper than like getting it towed somewhere. They just, they'll take it. Keith, if I take you to LAX, can I convince you to abandon your car and buy a big boy one? Probably. Okay. Deal. Probably. Oh, Heath, what do you drive? It's a it's a very nice. It's a 2005. It's newer than I said, and it's it's a Subaru. It's an <laughs> Whoa, Outback, really actually. Old. It's got all wheel oh, drive, so it's it, it's the a wheels great that car slip to kill yourself to in. the wheels that grip. I don't know if you know about that technology, Kara. <laughs> Pretty cool. Back to the movie. I don't think we need to answer every question that's posed from everybody. <laughs> they they drive away in the one car in Tom's car, and they they leave the shitty other car there. And then they have to, they have, to, they were told to improvise one second of driving. <laughs> and the exact <laughs> words we get are, so drive, watch, <laughs> the driving, driving now. stuff, car go forward. There car are go back. people in there, man. And exact quote. <laughs> there are people in there. Cut. Wait, that's an actual quote. So drive, yes. watch, so the stuff. like so loud, like, yes, and so drive. I started, you go now. And so drive, watch the stuff. There are people in there, man. <laughs> and they cut. I love it so much. <laughs> so good. All right. Well, I just had a thought bubble about doing some drugs to help me through the rest of this movie. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. Then we'll be back with act two of Born Into Mafia. All right, man. So the assassin we're meeting is called the Black Mamba. She's killed more men than you and I can count. She doesn't deal well with disrespect. So watch your P's and Q's. You got it, boss. All right. Gentlemen. Black Mamba. Hello. I assume your flight was all right? Ugh. Total nightmare. I had my Cobra Venom in a perfume um, bottle. Uh, sorry, just you, Cobra Venom? I feel like it would have been Black Mamba Venom, right? Don't you use that? Because your, your name 
I don't understand. My cobra venom, it was in a perfume bottle. Weird. But when I got to security, the lady was like, you need to pour that out. And I was like, it's under four ounces. And she said, yeah, but it's not in a plastic bag. And I said, okay, well, do you have a plastic bag? And she said, we're not allowed to give you plastic bags. You have to pour it out. So that's like Worst. my whole thing. There's not a reptile place around here, is there? Hmm. Uh, I not, don't know. Not really sure. Okay. And then I was like, well, that's fine. I still have that Cobra in my luggage. Well, guess whose luggage Mamba. didn't make it to Dallas? Mine. So now I got to wait for fucking United to find my luggage. Cobra's probably dead now anyway. I haven't eaten anything but Chex Mix since 9 a.m. this morning. And they didn't have the snack box I wanted on the flight. Right. Oh, it's a whole thing. Okay. Well, you ready to kill this mob boss? I mean, I'll try. I hope he has a food allergy. What snack box did they have? The beef jerky one. Oh, I hate those. Thank you. Who's ordering that one? I ordered that one. I like that one. Of course you It smells up the whole plane. Yeah, exactly. What? Gross. Why don't you use Mamba's? That's weird. You're weird. <laughs> and we're back. When we left off, they were leaving the airport, and now they're pulling up to Jacob's house. Actually, Jacob's mom's house, where Jacob lives at age 30. And his mom is also age 30, so a lot of confusing stuff going on. <laughs> He's three years older than him. And what's amazing is, as we mentioned earlier, Jacob and his mom are African-American, but they have made them do all the Russian traditions when greeting guests. So she's like, I will make us a pot of tea. <laughs> and he's like... Yep, normal <laughs> tea service that Californians always offer each other. Standard, yeah. <laughs> she goes, she goes, welcome to America. Let's sit on this squeaky couch and stare at you. Oh, the floor <laughs> couch is the best. <laughs> okay, so we get the noise of the couch for a while, which was, of course, hilarious. That's never not funny, forever. It's the best. <laughs> also, we get mom she sits down and she's like, all right, let's all sit down. She sits down. She's like, nope, I get up uh, back to and I make tea. Fuck. And just immediately stands back up, goes to get tea. And then we watch them waiting for a while. Nobody says anything. And we cut. <laughs> That's the scene. Yep. We'll see. I feel like something terrible happened and they had to cut it. Like somebody panicked and they were like, OK, nope. We're just going to move on. I guarantee you, Victor Victoria was like, hey, guys, whoever's farting during my movie film, you need to stop it, okay? <laughs> Get your butthole glued shut like a normal American. All right. So <laughs> they cut away from that. And now we get a phone call. It's between Dimitri and his guy in L.A. named Jake. And Jake is reporting in. Jake is Dimitri's henchman. Tom is dad's henchman. So now we have a Jake and a Jacob in the movie. And I, th I think, <laughs> yeah, I think Vasily was just like, those are different entirely. Yeah. And also like, don't commit super hard to Jake being Dimitri's henchman because in a couple minutes he will not be Dimitri's henchman. So again, don't, don't put all your chips on that particular square. <laughs> right. Okay. It's not going to particularly matter, but it's, it's, uh, it moves around a lot. Absolutely. Then we're back on the squeaky couch and they talk for, <laughs> 15 minutes about the weather approximately if you uh, this is the conversation i imagine if there was an orgy of people with nothing but premature ejaculation right like four seconds later when it's all over everyone's just like wow so is it <laughs> like this in russia no no we get all the mm -hmm. all the seasons in russia you're gonna list them i am summer <laughs> spring <laughs> winter but like it's so sad. Aww. But like, it's not just that they're, okay. So, so, so they're talking about Russia and LA sort of, and the weather. And we get the pop-up that says cultural exchange. Cultural exchange. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. But then what's happening in the movie? Hard cut to talking about dead mom. Just real, just like next sentence. <laughs> like there's yeah. just no warming. Up I mean, again, like, you know, like big orgy, premature ejaculation, immediately dead mom. I feel like that's happening. Yeah, fast. Like, exactly. Yeah. You're starting yeah. Like, so it's as cold in Russia. My mom is dead. <laughs> My mom like, died <laughs> from the death. And they're like, oh, I didn't know your mom died. That's sad. And he's like, yeah, it's sad. <laughs> 
Okay. What were those seasons again? What were them? <laughs> what were we talking about? It's so awkward and long. It's hard to convey in a podcast we want to keep funny. Right? <laughs> right. We, can't, we would be failing you in entertainment value by describing just how long this scene is. It's <laughs> oh, amazing. I love just the general acting feel to it. You remember in like middle school... And they would make, you know, they'd make you do like a sketch as part of like health class. Everybody break up into groups. You're going to do a little sketch about something. And, you know, you're trying to like deliver lines, but you're an idiot in middle school. And like just the act of acting makes you all kind of almost laugh, you know, as you're trying to deliver it. Mm -hmm. That's the whole movie. That's everybody in the movie is like, (laughs) whether stupid. I wrote that at the very beginning. So when I was in middle school in my Spanish class, we did a Titanic parody. And my friend Kelly played, what's her name? Rose. Mm -hmm. And my friend Mark played Leonardo DiCaprio. (laughs) And I love whatever his name was. And I played all the other parts. Fantastic. (laughs) I I changed hats a lot. Because she's a multi-talent. She was a triple I am. I'm a multi-talent. Hold on. Obviously. And it's so bad that we shot this on a VHS camcorder. And oh so my our- God, give me that tape. Mark, yeah. Kelly, I know you're out there. <laughs> I have, I don't have access to a lot of resources, but I will make you whatever <laughs> prank website you want, Mark and Kelly. Get me that tape. <laughs> get me that the, tape. The editing is, is such that there are sometimes the ends of scenes where I'm going, cut the camera. <laughs> you know, like that yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> it's amazing. But it's the exact same level of quality as this Yep, film. identical. Identical to this very real movie that this guy distributed. And, and yeah. one of the things they're doing in this very scene where they're talking about the weather and his dead mother is they're cutting back and forth hard, real hard, just randomly. It's like the actors are throwing the camera at each other in <laughs> between lines. Yeah, almost every scene is a one shot, first of all, which like is the weirdest thing you've ever seen. So it's very rare to have multiple characters in the same frame. So it's like, I say something, you say something, I say something, you say something, just going back and forth and back and forth. And then they're cutting hard to Jake, who's standing in front of a We Buy Gold pawn shop Mm -hmm. with his giant gold ring talking about, I don't know, being a mobster. And you're like, what is happening? I don't... This whole movie is just what is happening. Yeah. I don't know why they did a cross cut there. There was no reason. They they could have just shown us like three sentences from that phone call to give us the dumb information we needed. And then then showed us the whole scene of them for 15 minutes talking about (laughs) weather and dead moms and sex or whatever. Yeah. Would have been better. Did they talk about sex? I don't I don't know if they directly talked about sex, but it felt sexual. Ah. Hey, Heath, what part of the scene did you think was about sex? Because the only other part of the scene that we haven't <laughs> talked about yet is where they talk about Jacob's mom. Yeah. I, you, OK, you didn't feel the chemistry of the sexual moment of all that happening with the, the mom. And then also Jacob being like, let's go check out our bedroom together because yeah. we now live together. I give you that, Heath. Like the first thing I wrote was, oh, no, Jacob's mom is also his girlfriend. They're all the same age. They're all <laughs> just make porn together. If you want to make porn together, that's great. Ooh, actually, yeah, I might be kind of into that. I feel like he hired everyone for porn. Yeah. And they got their clothes off and they were like, guys, let's not do this. We all came like, right away. Rent, let's I make a movie, movie now. camera. <laughs> right, exactly. Yes. Circle jerks over. This has an everybody came too early in the porn feel to the it acting. Does. Absolutely. And it, Everybody is like weirdly attractive in this movie, but not. Like there's like a weird paradox okay, I, of attractiveness. Until you said but not, I was really okay. confused, Kara. But don't you feel like it's like a paradox of attractiveness? Like they're all yeah. like could be attract. Like Jacob mm. and Jacob's mom are definitely both very attractive. Oh. And I would say the uh, the girlfriend that we're going to later meet, very attractive, right? Hmm. Mm. The French model, Russian model, French I don't, know. I don't like grandmother. Disagree. We're saying no about, interesting. I bet she's the hottest one in the old age home. I, <laughs> she does so look like I she's think that's clearly work, positive what you just really described. It's say. weird <laughs> say. Um, that you used that as a bad example. There's somebody later who I actually wrote like, oh my God, he's so hot. I think it was maybe the homeless guy. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. We're learning a lot about Kara's type here on God Awful <laughs> Movies. A lot, a lot of thing. sexuality stuff happening. Not a lot to this movie, but so you, again, the deeper we dive into the movie, the more we reveal. Okay. Anybody well, watching, go back. Look, you'll see. You'll see what I mean. 
Okay, well, speaking of going back, I think you two need to go back right now. We're about to meet the French model who is clearly attractive, who is, yes, possibly the hottest person at the old age home in a very good way. <laughs> Jacob, and, Jacob and <laughs> Ivan and Alan go to the mall for like a little adopted family bonding with friend guy. And they're going to pick up some ladies together and they do find one. They literally say that. Let's pick yeah. up some chicks. Well, they thought bubble. Let's they pick thought up. bubble. Yeah, he wrote, "Don't yeah. point at the chicks." <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just blink, so blink, weird. blink, blink. Shut up! Don't point at them. Yeah, yeah. So, but they do. They point, and her name is Celine. She she sees them very clearly. Point at her, <laughs> and she starts walking past them in the mall. And she is confused by how cameras work in movies too. Yep, she's not. She's kind of torn, staring directly into it. Yeah, she's staring right at the camera and then she's like, wait, 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 don't look, mm -hmm. don't look. Wait, no, yes, I'm looking, I'm looking. <laughs> and then she's like, hello, uh, stranger that I didn't step on an X of tape to talk to just now. <laughs> to be uh, fair, all the other times this actress has been on camera, it's been a laptop camera, so I'm sure it was confusing <laughs> seeing a film. Sure, so okay. Camera like that. That's so bad. <laughs> but, okay, nothing is as, as insane as her very first line in the movie. <laughs> Not line, thought, thought bubble, bubble, Heath. Oh, sorry. Thought well, bubble. I think of that they all run together. It, honestly, <laughs> the thought bubble cinematic tool, I think, might be a genius thing in this movie. Like, it really grew on me. And this is when I really started thinking, like, oh, this is very good movie making. Anyway, her thought bubble <laughs> says, as soon as she sees <laughs> Vitaly Versace... Ivan, she says to herself, wow, fresh, foreign DNA. Yeah. Exact words in her head. That's always my first thought when I meet someone who's not American. Okay, I'm glad because yeah. I was wondering if that's what women are thinking. <laughs> this is this is the insight we bring Kara okay. on for. To be clear, she is she's a white person though. So she's saying like <laughs> fresh, finally some of that Caucasus <laughs> Mountains <laughs> DNA found its way to America. I just have to point out that this this scene where he picks up the girl and shakes her hand and he's like, we are on date now. And she's like, oh, yes, very good. This is what the men who yell out of the windows of cars at women think hitting on women is going to go like, right? Whenever you've seen a man like just yell randomly at a woman and you've been like, what the fuck's the point of that particular behavior? He's picturing this scene in this yeah. movie that yeah. Kara's going to turn around and be like, ooh, foreign DNA. <laughs> <laughs> You're one lucky son of a gun. And then literally after he comes back and he, they're like, oh, you got a number. Oh, bro. Like you've only been here for five minutes. And you already got a number. He was like, let's go. I got to call her. <laughs> yep. Let's go. It's time for the next scene, oh, my friend. I wanted her to call her right then while she's walking away and her be like, are you fucking calling me? Right now? Hello. I call you on a cellular phone. Yeah. It goes up to a satellite in the sky. There is a dog in ours. I, I, I hear you just live. Please lose this number now. There's a dog in ours. I heard you. He was very brave. We gave him medal. Laika. Guys, I went to the, did you know that I went to the um, the museum or I went to the Sputnik Museum in Kazakhstan. Nice. I, like I, I experienced the um the mood the that you like space program that got into allegedly space first or they're yeah. like hey friends welcome to Tiesville you all know when we are in Thai because we are same country doing same amount of great so here was our spacket program it went super good we launch a dog into space he died but you know that is the Russian way anyways we call it a tie the end of space story but the thing is it was kind of like that. yeah I too have been to Russia, Kara. <laughs> no, no, no. The, have you been to Kazakhstan, like where the Sputnik Museum is? No, I'm still alive. It's outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still alive. I don't I, know if you've noticed. I went to the Baikonur Cosmodrome to like see a rocket launch and they we got to go to the museum and it was amazing. The tour guides, <laughs> it was kind of Sounded like exactly that. like that just now. <laughs> Sounded exactly like that because yeah. that's what all of Russia is. Yeah, I've been there. Amazing. Okay, sorry. It's my story. <laughs> Sticking to it. Okay, so 
He doesn't. He, cl- is there a hot homeless guy who can enter? <laughs> yeah, the that, that's about to happen. Great question. Like I, Great question. I wrote it too, but I was nice. Unha- you even did the PC. You're objectifying <laughs> this man, but you had to do unhouse. Oh, God. well, I, I would hate. When I was picturing shoving this dude's slong into my two by four, I made sure to use the correct Unhoused. I did. Unhoused. I wrote, I wrote, dang, unhoused Russian dude is hot. <laughs> there, okay. <laughs> He's hot. You got go back. Go back. You'll see. Interesting. Like to support him with my social safety net, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'd give him more than a dollar. If you know okay. what I, mean. I literally so, wrote that. They, oh my God. <laughs> Karen did write that. I just noticed that. Yes. You belong on our show, Kara. Yeah. Oh so th- they, they walk out of the mall and they, they uh, come across an unhoused, beautiful <laughs> Russian man. And he asks for a dollar. And they yell something mean, right? They yell some, like, get a job type of comment. Oh, yeah, they did. So, wait, they're not good people. No, they're They're not. not No, they're not. I was so distracted by the hot guy that I... He was, yeah. Did you guys notice that Ivan has some intense serial killer vibes in this scene? He definitely has some intense... Very much so. He's he's definitely sizing up Kara's favorite actor for, you know, a skin (laughs) mask later. Yeah, he reminds me of... Did you guys ever see that TikTok that... You know, then I saw on Instagram um, because I don't have TikTok of the guy ironing oh his God. sheets. You're 90. Yes. Yeah. He's well, that guy. Also, he's about to murder an unhoused man like American Psycho here for sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. And then iron his sheets is what I'm yeah, saying. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I would be 0% surprised if he violently irons his sheets and spent the rest of the episode passive aggressively quipping about how you're, you're throwing off the angles of your back or something. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So they they walk away from the unhoused man, and Ivan calls Celine here, and he gets a date for tomorrow. Very exciting. He's so hot. So hot. This movie is from 2007, but somehow his cell phone is from 1992. All of them are. Did you notice yeah. that? They're all huge, giant, tremendous. Yeah, they're Zach working with Morris like Zach Morris style like, stuff. Yeah, they have yeah. antenna, antennae, plural. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I just have to talk about this one moment at the end of the scene. So he... he Are you talking about the best worst wind up to a line in a movie ever? Incredible, <laughs> yes. The like physical, like old timey baseball wind up of this guy's face before his line. Is that what you're talking about? Exactly, because he, she says yes. And then we watch Vitali Versace try to act happy and you can see it's perfect they always say that like acting is the revelation of thinking and it's the opposite bad universe version of that because you could see him be like what is happy okay well smile okay move face and then the word yes yes Yes. That is what happened that's a great description of what happened that is the acting performance we see is tremendous. And then we hard cut to the Hollywood side. Yes, exactly. So it's, hard the, cut. it's the big wind up and you're like, oh, I'm sure I know rhythmically when he's going to say his neck. And then it comes out when you don't expect it somehow, no. even though there's the big wind up. It's the best. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so he got the date. The next day, he's standing in the middle of the road to meet Celine for their date. Bird sounds! Bird sounds! <laughs> and there's a good deal of bird sounds. Yes, this is when the birds and the insects, I believe, started making fun of the movie <laughs> yes. for the rest of the movie. Because what happened is they're, they're supposed to be going on a date in the park, which is very boring. But Vitaly was like, we need some bird sounds for the beautiful American park that they are hanging out in. <laughs> so he bought like bird sound free pack from freesound.com. So, I mean, he downloaded it. He didn't buy this, right? And he was just like, they were like, great. So which bird sound do you want to use? And he was like, all of them, friends, they're free. All of them at once at maximum <laughs> volume so that it's like you're being waterboarded, but with a bird. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. We get a quick (laughs) shot of basketball for no reason. Also, Jacob and Alan play basketball without a hoop together for like two seconds of dribbling. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Come back away and they have their date. They go to Malibu and we know that because Malibu thinks to itself, welcome to here. Yes, (laughs) that's weird. Here by a thought bubble of Malibu. Yeah, it's like a, it was like an umbrella. I think that mm-hmm. was thinking it. I'm very confused, but I, I also thought it was the umbrella within Malibu. But I like the idea that it was the city itself. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, so it's like a really nice seaside restaurant. It looks like, and there's an umbrella there that says like "Welcome to Malibu," and then very clearly 
Vitali got kicked out of that nice restaurant where he was trying to hijack a shot. And they were like, get the fuck out of here. So get the, the fuck out of here, the, man. The rest of the date is at a mall. I told else. you I would order a Coca-Cola, my guy. <laughs> Let me shoot my entire movie here. This date is the worst thing that's ever happened in the Thank world. Thank you, Kara. Like, so, every, like every yes. thing. <laughs> this does lead me to my question. Kara, would you rather be eaten by mongooses? I think it's A. Or have this guy do a finger walk across God. your hand the way he does on this woman's hand? I think the part that really got me was that through, I'd say, 80% of the day, and it's a long day, through like 80% of the date, he's like open mouth chewing gum. Oh, yeah. And they, there's <laughs> yeah. there are several shots where he's just been like, and we should also have a shot in the movie where we press our faces together. You know, <laughs> like fun friends. We just, you press your ear to my ear and there's like a little bit of suction that brings our ears <laughs> together. Yeah. And then my face just gently presses against the first layer of your makeup. And then we wash my face for several minutes. because ow, it ow, came too much, too close, too me, close. On me, on the... <laughs> The bug that was in your ear crawled into my ow. <laughs> and then we get the sex scene, which is awesome because it's very clear that this guy was like, and then we will do a hot sex scene. And she was like, no way. If you want to do a sex scene, you got to join my OnlyFans. And he was like, okay, well, I'll tell you what. Can we take clothes and lay them on a bedroom floor? And then we're both under the covers. <laughs> and she was like, yes. <laughs> I like that they they put the clothes at exactly even intervals for some <laughs> yeah. reason. Like it would be like, okay, one shirt. Okay, step, step, step. My pants probably now. Yeah, one pants. Cool, go. All right. <laughs> and they eventually get, yeah, naked and slam into bed together. And we, we get the, okay, we had sex scene. It's, yeah, but before they close it, we have to say how it opens. She literally is like, name how I am special. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Name how I'm special. I can't. Ooh. Oh my God, these people. Okay. Name how I'm special. Oh my God. Yeah. And he like names how she's special enough. He just, he names like the side of your face, cheek, <laughs> how our ears sucked together when I said that suction thing. Mm, and she's like, cool. All right. Good dinner. We're going to take off clothes one at a time. You get one sex, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. ready for some classic Parisian model sex where our, <laughs> our entire bodies are hidden under the covers. <laughs> so they have now consummated their amazing relationship. It's going to get better and better. And then we're back with the guys playing basketball on the yeah. side of the road with no hoop. We see it all the way this time. And it's clearly in like a parking spot on the side of a road. There's no hoop there. And then the movie realized that somebody told them and they were like, no, we have a hoop. And they show us stock footage of a basketball hoop for a second. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, It's so bad. I love this scene so much. Freevids.org version of a basketball hoop. And then to move the plot forward, Tom, the red guy from earlier in the movie, shows up and he's like, hey, there must have been a better way to reveal this information. But I'm here. I work for his dad, who is the head of the Russian mob. Okay, that's it. That is, uh, I'm just here to deliver that information. Not okay. sure why I'm delivering it to you. We got you. But, uh, he literally said, this is the quote, his uncle killed his father so he could take over the family business and now he wants Ivan dead too. And actor number three, Heath, Allen, whoever, was like, Thank you. what's the family business? And then he's like, oh, he's the head of the Russian mob. And he's like, <laughs> cool. Like he looks minimally concerned by this information. Yeah. It was like they like put this in here to remind the cast what the movie was about. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And then Alan tries to do like a not it. Right. He's like, well, I don't want to help him. Not it. And it's like, no, you're still in the movie. And he's like, oh, OK. <laughs> OK. All I could focus on for this whole scene besides the crazy basketball thing was you got to tuck the tag in on your T-shirt. So yeah, Jacob's t-shirt has the tag sticking scene. out and they keep showing close-ups of it. Close-ups like of it's an over the times. Because it's an over-the-shot oh. shoulder shot for Jacob and the tag is like, did you guys want to get me out of the way before you start the movie? I don't know why shirt tags are Jewish, but I felt it. I felt it and I said yes. But just then, Dimitri's goons roll up and they have a, what I can only describe as a nine-year-old's playing shootout, shootout. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's literally a point. To end this scene, Alan slash Heath is hiding behind a tree from one of the bad guys. And the bad guy's like, I saw you. I saw you. You have You're to come out. You're behind that tree. I got you. And he's like, no, I'm not. 
<laughs> and he walks over and he's like, yeah, yeah, you are. I'm, I'm right here. And he, why was he, how was he hiding banditry? He was wearing a pinstripe suit. <laughs> like, yeah, not like the best plan. Full, full on. <laughs> Did you guys ever see Spaced? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Do you remember all of the shootouts that they would do in space where they exactly, were like air guns? Yes. That's what the this space was. Level shootouts, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, the bad guys have shot Tom now and they've captured Alan and thrown him in the back of their car. He's, that's going to matter for later. Then we're back at LAX. Wait, so to remember, can we remember real quick? Tom, again, was the guy who the dad sent to take care the of the man. kid. Yes, the okay. red man. Tom the Red Man, but he got shot in the head with some ketchup. Okay, sorry. Tom is, yes, Tom is burn victim Tom. He got shot, right. And now they have Alan in the trunk. But where's Jacob? <laughs> Jacob, Jacob ran runs away. away. Yeah, Jacob oh, makes it Jacob, away. like, literally does serpentine to Jacob successfully run away. literally <laughs> runs <laughs> out of the movie to the extent that they will replace him with a different person for the end of yeah. the movie. <laughs> okay, all right, just to be clear. Okay, now I know where we are. All right, so... Now we cut back to LAX and Dimitri is flying in and his henchmen are picking him up and they have <laughs> the saddest fucking sign that says Dimitri on it. The handwritten sign is fucking it's amazing. It's so good. Here's what you can see in this beautiful sign. Someone took a pen and they wrote Dimitri and they were like, it's too thin. And he was like, what you want me to do? And he was like, Big up, make a... Do you have a marker? And he was like, no, I don't have a marker. What am I, a fucking arts and crafts teacher? I don't have a fucking marker. And he's like, well, then take the pen and make it like a big squiggle. And so they made big squiggle Dimitri with an old blue pen they got from the hospital I think when they, they were released. They wanted a marker and they like stole a dried out marker from a little kid and like had to scratch it out so many times to make the letters. It's so stupid. So... They're picking up Dimitri here, and it's another uh, Russian guy with no luggage. So, right, <laughs> dispelling the stereotype. I thought that was good. Was he Russian? I can't remember. Dimitri? Yeah, I mean, yeah. he doesn't speak Russian. He doesn't have a Russian accent because he's <laughs> in this movie and he's not the main character. But but he, yeah, he, this is Alexei's brother. Yeah, he he's is supposed, supposed to be, to be the Alexei's brother. Yeah, right. The, right. The, so, yeah, the uncle who wants to take over now and kill. I've yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'm up to speed. <laughs> <laughs> so they get out into the parking lot. Stupid henchman guy gets yelled at, which was fun. I enjoyed that. Oh, I hate this henchman guy. That was great. I would have watched it that whole movie. There's this great moment where the henchman guy tries to fucking get shotgun. And he's like, dude, the, he's literally the head of the Russian mafia. Let him sit in the front. And he's like, I get car sick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that eyebrows? But, but if I throw up, it's going to be your fault. Was that eyebrows? I love eyebrows. Is eyebrows the stupid henchman? I don't know. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, eyebrows it's, is the it's stupid eyebrows. Henchman, okay, okay right. sure. Yeah. Well, because the other the other fucking stupid henchman has Bluetooth. He has a jawbone. You guys remember? He those? does. Yeah. He's oh, got he has the so used car salesman silly Bluetooth thing. thing. Yeah. Oh, I hate it. And you know, this guy showed up to set and he was like pretty badass, right? <laughs> you won't believe this, but I actually <laughs> used this for my job at Radio Shack, and everyone was like, "No, we believe you, man. That is, uh -huh. yep. You're gonna wear it for the movie, okay? So from here, we get. I'm going to say conservatively a 25 minute nearly silent car ride with God. these mobsters. Well, because they can't, th you can watch these guys not thinking of what to say, right? Because there's Dimitri and he's trying to do like a badass glare, but you can only hold that for about five seconds before your forehead starts to hurt. And then there's Jake who's just like, Oh, should I start a word game? Should I? I'm thinking of a thing, animal, vegetable, mineral. And then the guy in the back is just like, having a good time, a good time with my friends. I love to be a mother. <laughs> but that's, but the irony here is that you're right. They can't think of what to say. So they give them their thoughts in they thought give bubbles, thought bubbles during this amazing. entire scene. And I was like, I think Eli Bosnick wrote all of these thought bubbles. And I will give you some examples of how. The first one. I can't wait to get of work. <laughs> yep. The second one, changing career. What does it take? I wander. I wander. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're all like this and it's great. And then eyebrows yep. in the back literally says money, money, money. <laughs> <laughs> the last one, this was the one I really thought about for a while. This job is SH period, period T. So this movie, which has had like three murders and will have at least two more, they were like, mm, I'm not sure I want to say the SH word, guys. You know, I am real Christian, okay? I go to church like every single week. But then he added two dots, not one. Yeah, so it's it, like he right. was, he was bleeping the word shoot. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
sheet, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> sheet, yeah. yes. I feel like maybe oh, these actors just got inconsolably high together in real life. And so they just like tried to improvise the scene and they had to put in stuff later because all they could think of was like, do my friends actually like me? I don't Very possible. Yeah. Is this where arms go? I don't normally. <laughs> I like cheese. What? So earlier I told you that all women, of course, when we meet somebody who's not American think, or all American women, I should say, think, hmm, fresh, hot, foreign DNA or whatever the fuck she said. So I'm curious, <laughs> all of these things that the men are saying in this car, these are like normal man thoughts, right? I do like cheese. I think that to myself a lot. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this, me, Heath and Noah spend a lot of time in cars together and most of it is in acute, awkward silence. Mm -hmm. But in your head, are you saying... Money, money, money. Well, Heath is thinking money, money, money. And I'm thinking changing career. What does it take? I wonder. Um, and Noah's actually thinking, I like this town. I'm going to make it mine. So yeah, it's, it's actually very insightful as to our dynamic. Mm -hmm. I love that. Accurate. Cool. That's why you got to okay. come to a live show with us. You can think of, I can't wait to get out of work. Or I can't wait to get of work. <laughs> to get up work. No, I want to be the one who's inside of his head. It's just girls, 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 girls. girls. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the movie started taking its 15 during the movie. So I think we get one too here, right? That feels fair. Absolutely. But first, let me give act three the hard sell. Will Alan be thinking of an animal, mineral, or vegetable? <laughs> Will there be a strong homage to Oedipus Rex? Will the movie start to become sentient and reject itself like a bad organ? Yes to all those things when we return for the Neil Breen-tastic conclusion of Born Into Mafia. Hey, 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 my movie writing pals. How's it all hanging? Going good. What's up? Natalie? Yeah. So, you know how when I show you the first draft of my super cool action movie film, you say to me, I don't understand it. Your acting is bad. You have face like bog woman. And didn't say that third thing, but but yeah, what? So I haven't realized. The problem is we don't know what the conductors are thinking. We need comic bubbles. Sorry, what? what is comic bubbles? You know, like in Kazam. Sorry, do you mean the 1996 Shaquille O'Neal movie? I, I don't think that movie had comic book bubbles. Do you mean subtitles? Maybe. Anyways, it came out in 1996 here in America, but in my village, it was just last Christmas. It's Kazamania over there from all the comic bubbles. So you want to randomly insert what the characters are thinking and feeling in comic bubbles like throughout the movie? Yeah, exactly. Trust me, comic bubbles are very popular in my hometown of Mologrovia. I feel like you just said a different name of where you're from yeah. the other day. Yeah, it was different the other day. Yeah, it got taken over by Molochrovian forces. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry? I just feel bad for the ink clams. They will all be genocided. And we're back. When we left off, we were watching an extended car ride in awkward silence, and now they finally stop to do some torturing of their hostage, and they stop at a Cadillac dealership to, to do that. Like you do? I don't know why. Seems like a bad spot to do a torturing, right? Seems like a place that by necessity would be relatively populated. Strange choice. So they go to the back of the car and they've got Alan back there. And to be fair, Alan's not in the trunk. Like we keep talking about how he's in the trunk, but he's in the hatchback. <laughs> He is in the hatchback, yeah, there is. A... <laughs> Which means the whole time they were driving in the car, they could have been like, yo, you good back there? <laughs> you okay, man? You okay back there? Are you napping like that one friend who did too many shrooms at the concert we're all leaving? <laughs> so they pull Alan out of the car and they start beating him up a little bit. They punch him and they're like, where's Ivan? They're trying to get the information. And they, this is like the most intense, I'm putting that in air quotes, like, torture-y, death -y scene in the whole movie. And they gave it to the literal worst actor in the whole movie. Like, mm -hmm. Alan slash Heath slash uncredited actor is it's Alan. so bad. <laughs> and I don't know, there's a part of me that starts to feel bad for him at this part because, like, he didn't meet the son of a Russian mobster on the internet. He didn't want to have anything to do with this. He just wants to play basketball, man. <laughs> and somehow yeah. Jacob, Jacob got him into this really... He just wanted to play basketball and use Jacob's mom like the rest of the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So they try to get the information out of him for a while. 
And finally, they have to bring Dimitri in because he's like the big guns. I get. He knows how to choke better or yell better or something. So finally, he gets the information. They find out, all right, Jacob's house. We got to find Jacob in Jacob's house. That's where Ivan is. And if you're wondering what nefarious torture Dimitri uses, he uh, says, where is he? And fucking Alan is like, oh, he's at Jacob's house. And he's like, oh, great. Excellent. I'm... Um, Got all the information I Did need. Did I say it's scarier or something? Yeah, you <laughs> I mean, said it's yeah. scarier. You said it's Unclear scarier. Unclear why that works. But guys, Kara, Keith, I'm talking to you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three of us on this podcast, right? Doors are open. I feel like trust has been established. There's friendship here. Can I say it? Love. Can we all agree <laughs> that if we're ever caught in a tortured for information situation, we give each other up immediately? <laughs> like none of this tough guy stuff. We just immediately <laughs> give up the other person's location. Let's just make a pact. Right here, right now, spit in our hands, huh? Okay, first one. Yeah, absolutely. Thank just you. First one. Because you're just going to get punched a few times and then give Exactly. Up. Why get punched? Exactly. I'm saying let's save ourselves the punch. You know how much it hurts to get punched? It hurts so bad. So much. I've been punched so many times. I've never been punched. Hurts. Hurts. <laughs> All right. Well, Kara, Kara, you hold out as long as possible then fucking buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Black Hawk Down over there is going to fucking... <laughs> Make them electrocute my location out of her. But me, just so you know, me and Heath, we're giving you right away. Right away. Right away. Thanks for that. That's, that's... I'm doxing you right now. I'm tweeting your <laughs> personal phone number right now to prove my dedication. <laughs> not surprise me, sadly. So then they kill him. <laughs> they kill him. Yeah. He gives it up, but they kill him anyway. And he's like, I thought, but you were going to let me. And then they catch up his head and they show a close up of his dead head and his eyelids are <laughs> fluttering hard. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys notice that? Hard. Mm -hmm. They don't do the tongue sticking out. I guess that's only, that, you know, that's only accurate when, when hanging is involved. No, when you get shot in the head, you close your eyes and open them a lot while you're dead, apparently. Yeah, exactly. You mostly yeah. blank. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They show us the inside of the Cadillac dealership for a second here. <laughs> yeah. they're, having, they're having a normal day. Cadillac dealership is fine with this. And then we get a really weird, like a jarring tone shift from a mob execution to like a shift meeting at Applebee's with the mobsters now? <laughs> yes. The, now I will say, look, anyone who's ever had a Russian shift manager has had this weird, way too intense conversation about why you're not getting a promotion. So I get it. Okay. I get it. I've been here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I liked that the actors had, I'm going to say five to 10 second Skype delays between them, but in real life, but of different <laughs> yeah. amounts. A real, but on the movie. Yeah, especially exactly. Especially during this moment. They're off by so much. One guy I think is in the future. So he starts talking like before the other ones are done. It's, yep. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of crossover and then silence. So then we cut to Ivan thinking about stuff <laughs> oh God, in broken English. It's not as good as his performance of happiness, but it's pretty good. He is just being like thinking. Thank you. <laughs> think, 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 think. <laughs> One of his exact thoughts was, if there is a way in, it must be a way out, which I thought was deep, right? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Does he mean like the way out of the mob? Like there was a way into the mob, so now there must be a way out? I think so because, yeah, he says love is the answer. Yeah. That's and, and right. Mm -hmm. And then he thinks to himself, I'm going to do, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I wrote that he's gonna he's just gonna do it. Do what you ask, who cares? Yeah. Well <laughs> that's my analysis of the whole movie. It's decided that's it is done it's being done. Mm -hmm. Right. So he calls that septuagenarian model <laughs> to come meet him because he has something very important to say. She's like 35 and attractive. You you guys are insane. And you have weird taste. 35 years Pete. from her 50th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll buy that she's 35. No, come on. I will. Yeah, yeah, I'll buy that she's 35. Maybe certain of the skin on her body is 35, <laughs> but that was... You think she has that grafts? That cut off someone, yeah, on in a human no, trafficking like my situation. Okay. There's no way that... I feel like it's sad to say, but she has that thing that like some of the... Oh, I can't believe I'm, I'm evoking this name. Like that some of the Kardashians have where like they're young, but they've done so much plastic surgery that they actually look older than they are. Right. Mm. Yeah. It's like when they put Paul Walker's face on his brother's body. That's what this woman looks like without the CGI. It's just sad because she was probably really pretty at one point. Everyone's making crazy examples for unattractive. You keep saying things like Paul Walker now. Like, I don't understand anything you're saying. These are all positive. Insane. Okay. Whatever. 
But yeah, he's there to tell her how much he loves her. This is his list of things that he likes about her. She's beautiful. She <laughs> smells good. She has beautiful lips. Damn. She has eyes. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, this is not a great list when you love someone. Well, he's going to ask her to marry him right now. Yep. <laughs> she says exact words. I love you too to, to the marriage proposal. She says, I love you too with a question mark, but I hardly met you. And he says, I'll take that as a yes. I believe that is the exact exchange. Again. For getting engaged. It's a guy who yells out of a car's version of what a proposal is. Also, I just have to point this out. But at the beginning of the scene where she says yes, you can hear someone in the background literally going, you can hear the water. And indeed, you can hear the water while the camera's going. <laughs> it's an extremely loud fountain that they have their mic inside of. Yes, for this whole scene. I'm just curious, like, do you guys think that this is how some people actually do get married? Because I, I think this actually sometimes happens. Kara, I, yeah, I, I think it's how, how most this. people get married. It's like that, dumb that's almost exactly every time. where I was yeah. going, Heath. I think 90% of this planet are like, well, now that we've been to TGI Fridays three whole times, it's time for me to tell you what I spent that $275 at K Jewelers on. Will you make me the happiest man until our divorce at that Red Rock Inn <laughs> <laughs> next year? It's so scary. Yeah. Okay. It's rough. There are worse things than being a lone female hiker. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll pick lone female hiker every time. You could be married to Vitaly Versace. Exactly. By the way, he has a different name every single time you reference him. He does. Yes, correct. You called him Vladimir a few <laughs> minutes ago. I do. Okay. I, I hold no room. Fyodor? I have no responsibility. Okay. So now we cut to Jacob. Jacob, the actor who plays Jacob, he has quit the movie at this point. So they had a different white guy who is bald. <laughs> Jacob was not bald, like looking at a door and someone shoots him in the head. And the other guy walks up and goes, Hey man, you weren't supposed to shoot him. And he's like, I did though. And he's like, I guess you did. Oh yeah. It was eyebrows. I was like, uh Oh, eyebrows just killed the DoorDash guy. Cause he literally just walks up to someone <laughs> and shoots him. <laughs> That's supposed to be Jacob. I can see why you're confused. Yeah. It is a person of a different race. <laughs> it's a completely different person. And then what's his name? Who's the guy who walks up to, to eyebrows? Jake. Jake. God, this is confusing. So J he's gotten casual in between <laughs> scenes, by the way, he was in a suit in the first scene. Yeah. He's now in like a wife beater <laughs> for no reason. So Jake goes up to eyebrows and is like, bro, like, why did you shoot him? You were supposed to get information out of him. And he's literally like, he wouldn't have given it to me anyway. What's done is done. <laughs> nah. Like, it's so Jake weird. Jake didn't seem like he was going to talk. <laughs> no, no, Jake's a good guy. Trust me, he wouldn't do that. I shot him right away. He executed him from behind. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? So now we cut back to Ivan and his grandmother. They're talking about their life together. Um, where they will live. Oh, yes. She, she asks, where will we live? And he goes, I don't know a place. What's with all the questions? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is this is when the movie itself started rejecting itself. The movie had a thought bubble, I'm pretty sure, at this moment. And a thought bubble from a movie is just, we watch a butterfly on a dandelion yes. for no reason. This movie actively starts to be overtaken by a nature documentary. Right. Like the like the medium of film itself is like, you will not produce this thing. <laughs> so Well, they're trying to distract us from the fact that the whole time we're looking at butterflies and bees. He's literally saying the most fucked up stuff like you're beautiful like my mother. I feel like I'm married yeah. to my mother now. This is good. This was rough. When he says you're beautiful like my mother, I was like, oh, that's pretty weird. And then he's like, maybe I married you because my mom died. And I was like, oh, that's pretty weird. And he's like, now I feel like I've got my mom back. And I was like, OK, well, I don't have jokes, man. You're just saying all my jokes in your movie. Uh, no. I don't know. I, maybe I'm wrong, Kara. Aren't those the words every little girl dreams of hearing? It feels like I've got my mom back. OK, I rarely do this. But like, I, I literally wrote in my notes here. I feel like this movie is sucking the intelligence out of my brain. Like you guys were worried about me getting so close to finishing my PhD and you wanted to knock me down a peg. Like I- Yes, this is actually- This is the kind of yep. movie, like it's fun, but afterward it hurts. Yeah. Like it hurts your head. When you're defending your PhD, <laughs> they're going to be like, so Kara, you- pointed out here about how steel beams melt when you run a plane into them. <laughs> Tell us about that. And you're only going to be able to remember the plot points of this movie. That's our, <laughs> our long con. Yeah, they're going to ask me an important question about like 
you know, Heideggerian theory, and I'm going to be like, you remind me of my dead mom. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's going to be Which really bad. Matches up pretty well with Heideggerian theory, right? Yeah. You know, it's not... Be like, I got my mom back. That lines up for sure. That's definitely in, I, the, in the venue of your... I wrote, make them stop talking in all caps. It was Okay, so well, painful. the birds were trying to make them stop talking. The birds were like, boo, fuck you. Fuck your movie. Get out of our park. You're the worst. Oh, but... <laughs> so loud. The best line is at the very end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who wants to take it? <laughs> he says, and I will pray to God that we die on the same day. And she's like, yeah, <laughs> what? Y- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. A Dupras. Classy. Like the note book. <laughs> yep. Love it. So we cut away from the happy couple. And meanwhile, Dimitri, <laughs> Dimitri has killed Jacob's mom inside their apartment. Oh, I love this so much. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And then Ivan walks in. Yeah, Ivan walks in. He sees the corpse and he's like, oh, hey, Uncle Dimitri. And he's like, hey, I didn't kill anyone. He's like, no, you did not. Uh-huh. I'm going to take a shit. Don't come I'm going to come me. with you. Don't, oh, no, you said don't. don't come with me to the okay. shit. It's a, it's a single shit. Cool. And then he <laughs> wakes up from a dream Next to the model. Oh, yeah. I forgot that didn't actually happen or did it happen? Okay. Was this all a dream or not? What does the okay. movie think happened? <laughs> Here's what I think happened. I think he meets a girl and this whole sequence with Jacob getting killed and Tom getting killed, that whole thing, that was his nightmare. No. Because the rest of the movie will be showing us what actually happened. No. Okay. So he actually did leave Moscow and come to Los Angeles and live at Jacob's house with Jacob's mom, who's the and, same age. And meet a beautiful great-grandmother. And and he did he did meet a <laughs> uh, beautiful Parisian model. They became engaged after one date. That all happened. Then he went to sleep. Then he had a nightmare. In that nightmare, the rest of the movie happened. In the rest of, in that, no, well, because the in, the nightmare is intercut with the movie before he's yeah, asleep. Yeah, it's yes, not linear. In that nightmare, it's like Memento. This is a great film. In that <laughs> Nightmare. I literally wrote, is this a good movie? <laughs> <My notes here. laughs> In that nightmare, all the bad things that happened to Tom and Alan and Jacob happened. But those were all a dream because now we cut to Dimitri, Jake and the new guy playing cards. This is what actually happened. Wait. Oh. Okay. Oh, yes. so that's not a second scene because I was confused because no, I was the like, first isn't scene. that one of those guys dead? Now we're in reality. No, this uh, is a new, yeah, exactly. I think this you're is, right. This is what actually happened. Yeah. But to be clear. I've cracked the code on this one. You did. You cracked a code with like a, a decoder ring because nobody who watches this movie will get this. Guys, I don't know how to tell you this. I'm Ivan De- Denise Pitt, <laughs> uh, director of this movie. <laughs> I learned English after Vitaly I made it, and Versace? I've been hoping nobody would discover it. His name um, has really evolved. Say your name that I just said to you. Valium. <laughs> nope. Verticals. Okay. And I have I've created this podcast so that I could eventually confront my own work and explain it in a way that people could really appreciate it. And this is how I really talk, you guys. <laughs> That's why I did it in the sketches. Do you have an Emmy? I have held an Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh my god. Okay, so this part you're saying this part's real. The, they're playing poker and now real. this is the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> we're not Wait, we're not there yet. Like I get that we we've got to actually say what happened though. He wakes up next to her. He says, "I had a nightmare. I dreamed my uncle came from Moscow and killed you and all my friends and we got married." And then yeah. it becomes And she's like, "What's wrong with us getting married?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then everything turns reverby. Mhm. Because he gets a phone call and they're like, your dad is dead. Yes. Oh, like that's, oh right. And then the movie turns into like a Hallmark card for a yeah, second. Yeah, like, yes. see, we're missing. Like, we can't get to the poker game yet. Okay. Yeah, Eli, it doesn't make sense until we think. how. So the, the Hallmark card movie thing was to indicate to us in thought bubble form, kind of. That yes, the Hallmark card is being the like, part let that me was tell real you and the part that really was not. Happened. Yes. But wait, d- but his dad did actually die. Oh. Yes. Okay, so it's still pretty fucked up. Like, <laughs> Yeah, his dad died, but now we're going to see what happened with the okay. actual mobsters when Dimitri came to America. 
Oh. Okay, so we had a nightmare that's like slightly different from what actually happened. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Giving us yeah. both. Yeah, because it's really like there's almost no movie left here. And, you know, I know you guys said Hallmark card, but like let's paint a picture for the listeners who are never going to watch this movie. It's an iMovie transition. I can actually tell you what it's called. It's called Flower Effect. <laughs> and it's a free iMovie <laughs> transition that you can put into any iMovie. And didn't somebody say at some point like, I don't think, yeah, this flower graphic is not doing what they think it is. Yep, that's what I wrote. I wrote, this flower graphic is not doing what he... The movie became sentient. Here's what happened, right? <laughs> Ivan Denisovich was sitting there with his thing, and he was like, I needed to do a, you know, like a ka la 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 ka la 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 And they were like, do you mean doodly do? And he was like, that's not what we call it in my home country, but okay. Can we get one of those? And they were like, no, man, you need After Effects for that. And he was like, well, what about this iMovie DVD transition? Can I use that in the last third of my movie? And they were like, you can do whatever the fuck you want, man. Jacob quit <laughs> and his mom killed herself in real life on our set so that she wouldn't be in this movie anymore. Yeah. Jeez. No, he does He does say to himself at this moment, it was like my dream came alive. And then we get the Hallmark mm -hmm. card transition -y thing. Yeah. Because that is this guy's version of doodly doo. Right. Doodly -doo. No, he was like, whatever. I swooshed to doodly doo. I don't know. I'm, I fixed exactly. it now with this. He did not have graphic. the budget for a doodly doo. <laughs> okay. So he unswooshed his swooshed doodly doo with the Hallmark. And now we're in reality. And the real thing that happened is his dad did get shot. But there was a double cross with Jake mm -hmm. and Tom. Yes. And Tom is actually still alive. Mm -hmm. Tom actually got Jake to double cross Dimitri. So Dimitri did not win. Exactly. In real life. Right. But we're not there yet. God damn it, Carol. When do we get to be there? What? I think we're there. <laughs> Carol, you have to let us be there. <laughs> I'm just saying like that exposition hasn't happened yet because we have to watch them play poker for a while first. <laughs> for a while. Yes, that's well, correct. I mean, we had to watch them play poker, but we don't have to make the podcast yes, we, audience yes, watch that. Yes, we do. Okay. I really enjoy poker and this scene made me mad. You must mad have been furious at the poker Because scene, they right? were just putting down cards and chips and cash Willy nilly. Absolute nonsense. Like there was no. They had like 30 chips total <laughs> that they owned. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and they're trying to play poker with three, four people. So they just have like $100 bills laying there too. Nothing, Nothing makes, makes sense. sense. No. This is not a matter of they don't know how poker works. This is a matter of they don't know how playing cards work, right? <laughs> right. They're facing different directions. They have different numbers of cards. The deck is in the center of the table, broken into three. Somebody pieces. eats yeah, one. Yeah, it doesn't yes, make sense. Like they're playing war, and then they're like, no, make it poker really quick. <laughs> and yeah, at the end, he's like, Sh show us your cards. And one person puts down like three cards, and then he's like, I got a full house, and he only has four four cards. Like, yeah. yeah. And then what some other happening? guy's like, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I win. Yeah. I win. But then they, there's a fight scene here. Yeah. Doesn't somebody die? Oh, right. They do the, they do the classic, they do the empty gun test. So they had the, the empty gun sitting there and then Dimitri grabs the empty gun to like sh shoot Jake, but it's, it's empty. So they knew Dimitri was bad, even though they already knew that because he literally killed Alex, two days ago, and they knew that. Except he didn't, because that was a dream. No, I think that was real. Oh, this is so confusing. That was before the Hallmark thing. Kara, follow Jesus. the vision that I laid out for people. <laughs> okay, and Take also- Take it seriously. But what, it's a masterpiece. But he just woke up from the dream <laughs> right before this scene. Exactly. <laughs> so, yep. so why is something that happened two days ago real? Or didn't it, Kara? <laughs> or didn't it? And also- the third guy they're playing poker with is a new actor with fabulous hair and literally has he a thought bubble. He is a new actor. The guy has a yeah. thought bubble. Kara, that's the homeless no, guy. That is not. Brad Pitt, before. actually. It is 100 I think the movie not. thinks it's Brad Pitt. There was a thought bubble that where the movie was like, is this Brad Pitt that we got? It says Legends of the Fall. It's the thought bubble. Yep. Yeah, and then there's something something about it being Brad Pitt oh, in the next thought okay. bubble, I think. Right. Because Vitali walked over when this guy joined the movie and was like, whoa, is this Brad Pitt? And he's like, that yeah. Guys, guys, that joke, that joke is really funny. We should put it in the movie <laughs> several dozen times. <laughs> okay. And they were like, they're your thought bubbles, man, whatever you want. Okay. <sighs> but anyways, they, they killed Dimitri. They killed Dimitri and they won. Yes, yeah, see, that's an important point. We can't get to the double cross yet. Oh, so now... Now there's the double cross. <laughs> now, Jake and Tony, right? Jake is Dimitri's handman. Tony is the red guy. They're having a jog together, like you do after you've pulled off a double cross. And Tony was shot, right? But not. Yes, okay. but not really. They revealed <laughs> right. that was the in double the, cross. That was in the nightmare. That was in the nightmare. Exactly. Yes. Okay. 
Yeah. That's why I wrote, who is the bald guy wasn't he already shot? Even though, even though Ivan wasn't there for that moment of the movie. <laughs> That was in the nightmare. <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And they they agree that they're going to be an independent socialist construct of the Russian mafia. <laughs> they will, they'll be leaderless, <laughs> like fucking fucking Valve, like Occupy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're gonna, yeah, what's, they're gonna have a broad spectrum power structure. The quote here is: <laughs> After Dmitri took out Alexander, we became independent. Now nobody can tell us what to do. Right, and then Jake says, "Except for me," and he's like, "No," and he's like, "Oh, okay, uh, okay." <laughs> So you're, <laughs> and that's the you're, end my, of the you're my boss, but you're letting yeah. me be like assistant regional manager. Exactly. For Los assistant to the regional yeah. mobster. Okay. And to be fair, guys, this is basically the end of the movie. The other thing is like a, what's it called? Like when a, a band goes off and comes back, like the encore. Encore? Yeah. yeah. Encore. Like, it's the encore <laughs> of the film. Yeah. yeah. Like this is supposed to be kind of the end of the movie. And then we get this weird ass encore. Like, like if a band did an encore by like, raising off the stage and disappearing somehow and then they show up in like a different arena and they're like basically second. yes yeah very strange but i think this was supposed to be the big like oh dun 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 double cross none of it was real exactly. like that's what we're supposed to think but we didn't get it i mean i got it because i made it but yeah you got it but like heath and i didn't get it i wrote who's the bald guy isn't he dead already <laughs> like we were very confused I mean, get on my level. Okay, you know, that's we're all there. I can we're say there. About that. Sometime later. So Ivan. So we're saying Ivan won because his guy won the double cross game. Yes, that's like the final thing. Well, well, but Ivan also lost because both his parents are dead now. Ivan won and lost. Anyways, sometime later, <laughs> well, he's got his mom back sexually with with his new wife. <laughs> exactly, he does. True. Yeah, he's got ew, it, but ew. with his hairless cat. He's married. Exactly. So sometime later, <laughs> um, and we and we. And we know it's some. You saying this woman doesn't look like a hairless cat? You Google Listen, hairless you're, cat. You're, it's and again with the, the crazy movie. examples that don't make sense for good, bad. The way you're trying to do it, I don't. Oh my god! You're telling me Cecil's cats aren't beautiful sexually. First of all, those cats have their hair. <laughs> Second really? of all, those cats travel through time. Three, they whisper how you're going to die if you stay in the room with them alone when Cecil walks out. So it's don't. just confirming my theory. Every new word you say. Exactly. Anyways, some time later. How do we know it's sometime later? It says That's what the title that. card says. <laughs> sometime <laughs> later in the time dimension. I wrote in my notes, it's your movie. You get to choose how much time later. Literally just name an amount of time. It's up to you. If you don't say anything, we'll assume that. If you want it to be earlier, you could tell us earlier. Wait, <laughs> we'll assume. wait, Next. wait. I see something in your notes that is a hole in your theory. Oh, all right. Love this. Take me there. You wrote... Jacob is alive now, question mark? Like you hadn't yet realized. I figured it out you since I wrote my notes. You figured it out after. Mm, figured you it out. didn't I, get it either when you were you watching. You didn't get it. <laughs> this is the final scene. Eli didn't get it. Yeah. Eli didn't get it. <laughs> Eli, do you consult somebody? Do you have like a research assistant who figures out these movies for you and then like you talk with them? After? I may or may not be a team of 12 different comedians like Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> we're not dealing with that. Anyways, Jacob is alive. Sometime later. Sometime later. <laughs> Sometime later in the real timeline. Yeah. Ivan. Oh, yeah. This is real now. Ivan and wife Celine and their new baby that they have. Oh, not and new. Jacob. Not new. They have like They're a three year old baby. Yeah, it's exactly. pretty old. It's a pretty old baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they had to say sometime later because they were like, but our baby is 97. And she was like, okay, we'll just say sometime later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And he, it's their anniversary. She forgot. But he got her the most romantic gift a woman could ask for for an anniversary. Uh, dog tags? Dog tags. <laughs> romantic, beautiful dog tags. Kara, uh -huh. let me ask you a question. <laughs> sure. I want you to really open your mind, open your heart. Uh -huh. I want you to picture it's the perfect man. You love him. <laughs> it's your third anniversary. He's got that foreign DNA. <laughs> He's got that foreign DNA. And he gives you romantic dog tags for your anniversary. Do you stick with him? Or is that the line? You're acting as if that was the line in this movie. <laughs> that would be the line for me. <laughs> really? Everything else. You would have been right there up until that point. Right there. A hundred percent. Okay. The dog tags were the problem for you. The dog tags were the problem. <laughs> okay. So Eli, Eli liked the ring from K Jewelers. That's official. <laughs> Absolutely. Obviously. Interesting. Okay. All right. One date. And then the baby's like, what the fuck is this movie? And it's over. And the only thing I have to say about this movie is that he literally puts his phone number and street address at the end of the credits. <laughs> he did? <laughs> yep. He literally ends the movie with his personal phone number. He's like, hey, guys, hit me up on Skype. It's just his phone number and his address at the end of the film. 
All right, so we're going to call him, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to call him. What do you mean I'm, you don't want to call gonna him? I'm going to call him. There are four people on earth I want to talk to less than Vit- Vitaly Versace. <laughs> all right. And all of them are convicted war criminals. He might live in Cleveland. I'm going to give him a call, see if we can hang out. Eli's only saying that because he is Vitaly Versace. I am Vitaly Versace. <laughs> Can't be in All right. two places. Well, that's places. the end of the fucking movie, for real. Uh-huh. They're just on the beach for a second, and then they're like, okay, we're going to walk slowly into the distance. Born into Mafia, you have watched, is what it says on the screen. <laughs> it does. <laughs> you have watched. And then there's a long pause, and they're like, wait, A, you have watched A, I wasn't finished. You've watched a movie by me. Here is my phone. Phone number in real life. But that's not here's just my, a real phone it's number. It's not just here's the phone number. I was looking at because I didn't finish watching after that. I mean, why would I keep watching credits? But some of the YouTube comments were like, this movie, which is only an hour and 20 minutes, is not really because 12 minutes are credits. Yeah, it's yeah. long. I watched the credits to see if there was going to be like a tie together and scene in the credits. I was so disappointed but that how, there wasn't. How is it that the IMDb page doesn't even have any of the characters' names? There's like three people who are named There's in this three movie. three of them have names. Yeah, yeah, I think everyone's doing an anonymous thing. But the credits like are so porn. long. Like how is that data yeah. not in the credits? I think they just all gave Vitaly <laughs> fake names, right? He was like, all right, everyone, great job filming the movies. If you could all just write your real American names on this clipboard. I'm going to put them in the credits. And everyone was just like, Smith, Smitherson. Also, don't forget to put your phone number at the end of the credits. And he was like, I never won. Thanks, big guy. Yep. 12 minutes of credits. (laughs) All right. (laughs) And that's the movie. Before we close it out, on a scale from one to 10, how good is this movie according to (laughs) Vitaly Versace? How good does he think he did? (laughs) Greek yogurt. (laughs) Greek yogurt, one to 10. Got it. Garris, similar answer, different answer. Uh, but this is this his first film. This this is his foray, his very first yeah, film, yeah, in, into cinema. Mm. Don't worry, there's so many more, Kara. <laughs> are you, there's so many more for us to watch together. Are you asking me in hindsight how good does he think this movie is, or right after he finished and was like in in his real face right now? If you were like, how good was that movie that you made that I watched called Born into Mafia? Wh- how much did you love it? What number does he give it? One to ten. I think I think in hindsight now he gives it like a seven, but I think in, okay. immediately after the movie, like cutting room floor, like you know he's sitting there, he's doing a screening with himself and like his family, <laughs> and he's like, yeah. "Is good, yes, is good, probably High five. probably best movie ever, yes, definitely." He was like, "Yeah, okay, strong nine nine five. Yeah, I think I think coming in, no okay. question. I think nine yeah. ten, yes, da, <laughs> right. excellent." And while that does it for our review of Born Into Mafia, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie for next week. Eli, what's on deck? A happily engaged couple find that temptation is everywhere. Will the consequences of their actions prove too much to handle? We'll be watching 2009's He Who Finds a Wife. (laughs) Oh my God. All right. (laughs) Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 415 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Kara for joining us. Wanted to uh, announce anything that you got going? want to thank you for not making me watch He Who Finds a Wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what else do I got going? I got my podcast. You could, you could give it a listen if you want. And I'm, and I'm almost done. When does this air? This airs soon, right? I'm almost done with my PhD, so, which means... Oh, we can kidnap you. No, does that mean at the next episode you guys have to call me doctor every time you refer to me? Ooh. That is that is officially true. Yep. I think that's like in the bylaws, right? They got off a of movie. That's yeah. absolutely okay. in the bylaws. Awesome. Give me one second while I see if drcarisanamaria.com is available. Fuck, it probably is. You just hold yeah, that for me. That it is. Yes, if you could just buy it's that for taken. me. And- oh, I'll hold it. I'll hold it all right, Kara. Thank you. <laughs> And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Kara and Eli, I'm Heath, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. 
Eli Versace, I, I mean Bosnick, tracked down those dog tags IRL to give to his wife. She was not pleased. <laughs> Vitaly Versace, who held an Emmy once, made a sequel to this movie. It already exists. <laughs> no. It's called Born Into Mafia 2. Yes, yes it is. Kara was too slow, and now Eli owns DrKaraSantaMaria.com. <laughs> Yay. Can't wait to see what he does with the play. Oh, I haven't read these yet, so who am I? Who am I? Just a random person on the, in, on the writing team. Okay. Are you Melania? I am. This is the voice <laughs> I will be doing. <laughs> Melania it. is all white people accents outside of the United States. Yep, exactly. That's fair. All the accents I'm still allowed to make fun of. There's not a reptile place around here. What the fuck does this mean, Eli? <laughs> There's not a reptile place around here, is there? Oh, how about It'd some? be like comma and then a question mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I don't punctuate. Okay. I'm just going to do like this bell whole... <laughs> You're not like bell I got to... I'm a I lot like Bell Hooks. Do this whole Bell paragraph over Heavy again. Don't say Bell Here Hooks. we go. I love white go. women. All Stop right, it. we're doing this. <laughs> Total nightmare. I had my asp venom. It sounds like I'm saying asp venom. You're saying asp venom. venom. Every you time, there's cobra. no way around saying asp say venom there. Go ahead and say cobra. I think cobra oh, would you. make most sense. Okay. Yep. But if you don't find a time to work with us in September, I'm selling okay. you saying asp venom. It's also weird that the name would be Black Mamba and it wouldn't be Mamba Venom. No, Mamba Venom doesn't make sense. Cobra Venom makes sense or Ass How does, Venom makes sense. Why would, what are you talking about? Black Mamba Venom is extremely dangerous and would make sense, especially given that's the title of the character you invented. No, you should say Cobra Venom. Say Black Mamba for sure. <laughs> oh, fuck me. It's amazing. Should I say Sea Snail Venom? Does that make more sense? Ooh, sea snail venom. There you go. Great. If you say anything besides Black Mamba, I'm going to interrupt and in character and be like, that's weird. <laughs> You should. That would be great, actually. Okay. And then you spray him. Spray yeah. him with the okay. venom and then he that... dies. I get the beef jerky one. <laughs> <laughs> of course do. you do. Of course you do. I can't beef help jerky it. I should be famous, not you. You live like a homeless person. <laughs> That's a perfect food for, for Just flying. eating smoked meat yeah. in public. Yeah. It's high in protein. And Just high protein. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no thought. We live in a society. <laughs> okay. Goals, yoked, swole, keto. Okay, interstitial <laughs> three. Ink I think clam? that movie had Sinbad, not Shaquille <laughs> <laughs> Oh, really? Or it's the Mandela effect. It's one of the <laughs> Look other. at Kazam. Do we need to retake that? Kazam's real. No, Kazam's real. It is, and it's Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's the, what is the one with Sinbad? Shazam is the fake one with Sinbad. But that's not real, yeah. But that's not real. It's just we what, what? Sinbad was in something, though. No, no, we're not doing nope. this. Well, this. We're is, not doing you this right You did now. a whole Citation Needed essay on this. I know, and I'm pretty sure we all agreed that Sinbad did do something. That, that one's I'm not, sure he was I'm crazy. In a movie. That was the one where I'm not. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.